Hi, I'm PJ Tour Golfer Dylan Fratelli, and today I'm going to hit every single golf shot. Well, almost every shot. We're going to recreate as many shots as we can around the golf course in four different locations. The tee box, fairway, chipping, and sand. I'm gonna start by showing you guys a simple one. We're on the tee, so let's get the tee shots done. The tee box is this defined area here, usually a flat piece of grass where your hole begins, and for some people it finishes there too. Do you get yeah, that joke? Like, ha ha, you can't go off the tee. Uh. <laughs> off the tee. When I'm on the tee box, I have three tee heights. One, that's pretty low, maybe an inch off the ground. Two, normal height for any old normal tee shot. And then the third one is teed up really high to let it fly. The low tee height, pretty simple. The whole golf ball is going to be below the crown of the driver. I'm doing that to keep it out of the wind or to try and find a really difficult fairway when I'm feeling stressed. The medium height or standard height for me is simple to measure. Half the ball is below the crown of the driver, half the ball is above the crown of the driver, and it's a simple, normal, straightforward tee shot. The high tee position is pretty much as high as you want to go. I tee it maybe the bottom of the ball is touching the crown of the driver, but it's nice and high to aid me on par fives and other par fours that I'm trying to hit as long as I can. That could even be a bit higher, but that'll do. The fade. The technique on a fade is pretty simple. You want the club face to point where the ball finishes. You want your feet to point where your ball's gonna start and the shoulders mimic the feet. Swing along that foot line and it should come out right where you want it. The draw shot, not to be confused with the fade, is simply the reverse. Right to left shot shape. The draw shot is perfect on a hole like this one, the seventh at UT Golf Club, with a fairway swooping around to the left. Or if you're stuck behind an object, gives you the opportunity to get around that object and hit it to your desired location. The high bomb. The shot's helpful when you're downwind and you just want to hit the living crap out of the ball. The provisional. Ah, ball me blazer. For those that don't know what a provisional is, it's a shot hit in case you can't find the golf ball. So long grass, high rough, or houses, something that might be out of bounds. You play another one from the teeing ground, it gives you the opportunity to carry on playing it once you're down there. You don't have to run all the way back when you realize you haven't found it. The stinger. The stinger is probably the most asked about shot. It's pretty versatile when you're playing in windy conditions. Also on Lynx golf courses, you can hit it 50, 60 yards of roll and get lots of distance. But honestly, it's kind of overrated. Every amateur wants to be able to hit it when it's quite simple. You just close the face down, put it back in your stance, and hit it as hard as you can. All right, we're done here on the tee box. Let's go out there to the fairway and the rough and see what strange and wonderful shots we can come up with. I've shown you a bunch of different tee shots, and now we're gonna see what the rough and the fairway and the surrounds have to offer. The uphill lie. The key about an uphill lie is not to lean back or lean forward into it. Just stand normal parallel to the slope and you'll be good. The downhill lie. Similar technique, square the shoulders, square the hips, hit down on it. The downhill lie is obviously gonna come out a lot lower. Uphill lie, much higher, but don't forget to follow through when you hit the downhill shot. The side hill lie. The side hill lie is definitely one of the trickiest shots. I've certainly taken a tumble from some of these lies, fallen over, so make sure you get firm footing, cement it in the ground, and try and make good contact from that position. The tree shot. As some of you may know, I had to hit a tree shot a few weeks ago. Ended up getting a penalty because I didn't get it right. Ball was hanging in mass, and your boy got a two-stroke penalty. The flighted pitching wedge. The key understanding of a flighted shot is something that goes below the normal height of a full shot. So it's typically a punch shot, something a little shorter, punchier, that flies about 20 to 30 feet lower than your usual shot. Make sure that ball's a bit further back in your stance. You're gonna hit down on it, take a big old divot, and make that ball spin. Oh, that could be good. That's gonna be really good. Could be good though. The fairway wood. The shot's quite a tricky one for me. A three wood is normally the shot, but I've got a five wood today to make it a bit easier. You use it on some long par fours when you can't get home with an iron, or a par five when you're going for it in two. Key is just to hit down on it. Don't scoop it, don't lean back. Clean contact should go in the desired direction and distance. That might be good. Go! Oh, just hit a wall right there. The divot. 
You often see balls roll into divots in firm, fast conditions. You're playing a great round, you're having fun, all of a sudden, I'm in a divot. Are you kidding me? Don't fear, you can still pull it off. Just make sure you hit down on it, take an even bigger divot, drive down into the ground, and hopefully that shot will end up somewhere near the flag. If you do this properly, that's what your club should look like. Hit down on it, make an even bigger divot, and you'll come out with some earth on your golf club. The mud ball. I am trying to cake some mud on the ball to simulate a mud ball. <laughs> it's a lot harder than you would think. And to make it look natural, I feel like I'm uh, Peter in the Hunger Games right now, <laughs> trying to camouflage myself. Obviously, the mud ball is not something most amateurs face because they're just going to pick it up and clean it in their friendly match. But on tour, we have to face this lie every week. The key about it is knowing what it's going to do. Aerodynamics are all messed up. There's mud and junk all over the ball. The key is to know that it's going to fly towards the mud. Right side, going right. Left side, going left. If it's above or below, it's anyone's guess. Oh, look at that move. The driver off the deck. Driver off the deck, one of the most difficult shots to pull off. If you practice it a lot, you can get good at it, but a very small face at the bottom of the driver here, landing on a flat piece of ground with no elevation on the golf ball, usually turns into a top when you don't get it right, but hopefully I can pull this one off without any outtakes. The fairway bunker. The fundamentals of a fairway bunker shot are the same as in the fairway. You don't need to club up or down. As long as you make clean contact and put a good swing on it, it's going to go the same normal distance. That'll do. The flyer lie. Flyer lie is really hard to control. You get a bunch of grass between the golf ball and the face. It takes a lot of spin off and makes it fly about 20 to 30% longer. So on this 120 yard shot, I'm playing about 100 yards and hopefully it goes the right distance to the flag. The backhand shot. This shot obviously relies a lot on hand-eye coordination. Some guys play it with the face of the club. I often use the back of the club. I've definitely had a fresh air before in tournaments, so be wise with the choice that you make. The cart path, or path as you guys like to say. The cart path shot is one of those Hollywood shots that amateurs love, but honestly, as a pro golfer, there's some situations where it really helps us. When you take relief, the rule says it's got to be the nearest point. That may be in long grass, crappy lie, who knows. Played off the cart path, you know what you're going to get every time. The skip shot. The skip shot is probably the most fun shot out there. 16th hole at Augusta, that's my favorite spot to do it. We're not quite there today, but I think we'll make UT Golf Club's 13th hole work. Keys are hitting down on the ball, giving it some spin, and making sure that ball skips off of the water a couple times. Normally those shots from the rough and the fair would end up on the green, but I'm gonna have to show you guys some versatile chip shots and maybe some random ones to show you around the green. The up and down. The generic description for a chip and a one putt. The chip in. Obviously, you know this is going in because it's a section. Just like that, it's easy, first take. Psych, that was actually the fourth take. The lob shot. The lob shot, very similar to a flop shot. The flop, you're trying to use the edge of the club. The lob shot, you're trying to use the center of the face. That's the only defining characteristic that changes. The links bump and run. This shot is really helpful, either if you're playing links golf in Scotland or if you're not sure that you have enough spin to hold the ball on the green. So you're gonna bounce it into the fairway first have it roll up onto the green and trickle down right next to the hole. The three wood bumper. This shot is really versatile when you're trying to get the ball riding on top of the grass. Maybe it's a little bit thick, a little bit more difficult for the putter to get through. And if you don't feel happy with the lob wedge, you might flub it or hit it really badly. This is a great option. The Texas wedge. If you know anything about me, you know that I'm a University of Texas wedge alumni. It's one of the safest things you can do, becoming a longhorn or using a putter from the fairway in a tricky situation. The toad putter. This shot is really helpful when you have a bunch of rough or some kind of object behind the ball that stops you from hitting a putter or maybe a wedge. You use this little surface of the putter on the toe side of the putter, end up hitting down on the ball, which gets it to pop up, get through that stuff, and then slowly roll onto the green and hopefully nestle up close to the flag. Catch it! Yeah! I don't even know how that ended up there. 
the overhead shot. This is a shot I've attempted many times. I've never pulled it off successfully. I've hit a few straight up, but never straight over my head onto the green. Let's hope this works out. Okay, we're gonna take a few to get this, but hopefully I can hit a nice, nice miss hit that works out. <laughs> Go! Oh, we got it. <laughs> Easy. Now I wanna hold it, let's go. <laughs> You've seen some shots off of the fairway on the rough. I think we need to take this to the beach. Time to hit some bunker shots. Bunker shot. The standard bunker shot, very simple. You're gonna hit an inch to two inches behind it. Try and get under the ball. The explosion of the sand is gonna force the ball up onto the green. Many different ways of doing it. Lots of spin, less spin, but I'm just gonna play the shot that rolls out next to the flag. The plugged lie, or fried egg as it's called, is something you don't wanna face on the golf course. Obviously it's a golf ball that's gone straight into the bunker, ended up an inch or two below ground. The trickiness of a fried egg bunker shot is the fact that you can't really get under it, so you really have to hit straight down on it, open the face up slightly, and pray that you can dig in beneath the ball. If you can't, you might as well just give up. The back lip bunker shot. The back lip bunker shot, probably the toughest one out there besides the fried egg. You really want to square the shoulders and the body up with the slope and try and get nicely underneath the ball and generate some spin. That's the only way you're going to keep it on the green. The front lip bunker shot. The front lip shot, probably the easiest bunker shot you can play because you have elevation. The slope will get it up in the air. You're really just trying to judge how much it's going to spin. Hopefully you can spin it and stop it right next to the hole. The running bunker shot. To pull off the running bunker shot, I just go down in loft. So use a 9 iron, 8 iron, even a 7 iron if you have tons of green to work with. You're going to land it just on the green and let it run out to the flag. The proposal shot. There are a lot of guys that have attempted this one before. Uh, I myself have not. I've done it on the golf course in a much more familiar surrounding or setting, but it's straightforward. One knee goes down, you just got to pop the question and hopefully it goes near the pin. And that's a wrap, we're out of here. Well, we just finished shooting there. That was tons of fun. We had some tricky shots, some easy ones. I hope I pulled off enough of them. If you guys can think of any shots maybe that I missed, put them in the comments below. And if you wanna find out a little bit more about my golf or golf on the PGA Tour, listen to the On Tour podcast with me, yours truly, Dylan Fratelli. We'll see you guys next time.